Ida Mafia. Nice to have you. We're at the Los Angeles Times Festival of Books. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, it's wonderful. You are the um, very successful author of the Shatter Me series. Um, and there's, what's, a, what's really interesting to me about the Shatter Me series is that you have three, it's a trilogy. Yes. But there are actually five or three and a half or four books, like, uh, because you do these sort of half versions from other mm -hmm. perspectives and things and release them as ebooks. Tell me, when you started to write this, how, first of all, the idea of creating half versions of additional books came about, and what, what do they serve for you as you're writing the books? Well, they're e novellas, so they're off, they were originally offered only exclusively as ebooks, and they were supposed to kind of bridge the gap between the, well, there was only supposed to be one initially, to bridge the gap between the first and second book and make the wait for the sequel seem not as long. Um, but I wanted whatever I wrote to be sequential so that it took place within the time frame of the story so that the readers would understand it to be something integral to the storytelling process and not something that they could, you know, wasn't really relevant to the characters in real time. Um, so they became a really important part of telling the story and I think that was part of the reason why my publisher asked me to write another one. So then they just became these bridge books between the major novels in the story and now we've bound them together in another book called Unite Me. So it depends on how you look at it. There are either five parts to the series or four. Do you see any other books coming out of that series? Will you ever create any other offshoots? Are there other areas that you can explore? Maybe. Yeah. Um, I don't ever want to say no and close the door on that completely, but right now I'm working on something new and different that I'm really excited about. It's called Furthermore, coming out soon. I can't really talk about it yet, but... You can't talk about it. Not yet. It's Come still on. kind of a secret. <laughs> but you've talked but. about the title. And people yes. know something is coming. Yes. They don't know when, no. and they don't know what. No, not only not you quite. know. Only a little. There's a little bit about about the book. So how do they decide for you, or how do you decide the sort of um, trail of information that you leave out for people, the breadcrumbing of info for your fans about what I'm working on about next? About just what you're working on next, and how much to let go of now, and when are you comfortable? I mean, how do you decide? That because obviously you have a huge fan base that wants to know. I know. And they're, they're all over with you on Twitter and on social media and they're curious. And they're so sweet. As am I. I and I love them for their enthusiasm. I really do. It's it's such a privilege um, to have someone out there wanting to read your books. But it's just a it's sort of a conversation between me and my publisher to figure out the timing and, right. and, and when it's right and but you're excited about it. Very excited. Yeah. So starting a new series, we can talk about that though. Not necessarily what it's about, but the idea of letting something go and starting something new. Mm -hmm. That's a like that's a process. You're as you said, you never shut the door. Right. But you're leaving a good friend behind here, Juliet. Yeah. Let's, so tell me about that feeling. Well, it is emotional to walk away from characters that you've lived with for almost five years. I mean, the length of that series was such an important part of my life. Um, such a chunk of me and my growing up and becoming who I am now. And, um, and I feel like I had that same experience with those characters. Like the girl that I met, Juliet, when I met her at the beginning of the series was such a different person at the end of it. And I felt comfortable walking away from her. Like, okay, you're a young lady now. You are independent and you can handle your business and it's time for you to go do your own thing and it's time for me to see who else needs me in the world of fiction. So how much of, uh, when you talk about Juliet like that, how much of it is talking about yourself? I mean, it seems to me that the same could be said of you as you started the series and where you are right now. Yeah, you know, I think it's impossible not to leave a little bit of yourself on the page, uh -huh. but she felt almost like a little sister to me. Uh, I, when I wrote Shatter Me, I was tw 20 or 21, and by the end of it, I was 26, 25, I, forgetting the exact time frames now. Um, and so I felt like I was growing up with someone who was just a few years younger than me, you know, and it was almost like I was teaching her how to grow up and teaching myself how to grow up. And so I feel close to her, but there's a little bit of me in her. So you're, we spoke to your husband earlier, Ransom Riggs. You guys have this um, really fun, creative, uh, literary life together. It's very and you kind. happen to write in the same genre. Yeah. Not necessarily the same audiences, but I'm sure there's crossover because they all know you're together. Yes. Um, but that must be a, sort of an interesting way to live, knowing that your husband is on the same social scene as you are, going to the same festivals in many cases. He's here, obviously. Yeah. Um, and that you guys have an understanding of each other's work so mm -hmm. deeply. Tell yeah. me about that. It's exactly like you said. I mean, it's great. 
I love it. A lot of people ask if there's competition or if we feel competitive and this is going to sound really gross, but I think if you love someone enough, it just doesn't feel that way. His successes feel like mine and I think he feels the same way about me. And so it's just really fun. It's like you get to hang out with your best friend all the time and I really enjoy it. It's very charmed. It's a, and, you, and you share yeah. a lot of it online and you share a lot of it with your social media friends and you share a lot of it with your fans. They obviously know you're together um, and it's, I think, fun for people to be able to sort of to keep an eye on you, but on the same token, sometimes maybe that's not fun. I mean, how do you balance that? Well, it is It is sometimes a struggle to negotiate, you know, the difference between like your public persona as an author and, and the relationship you want to have with your fans and your personal life that you want to keep private for yourself. That's right. And I mean, I so prefer that people enjoy seeing us together than that they don't. Uh -huh. um, that's is. certainly the, the better way for things to be. but. It is, it's something we're still figuring out, you know, still navigating. Uh -huh. so. Well, the, um, you know, the other thing for, for you is that as you are moving into this new series and leaving something behind, you're starting something brand new. Mm -hmm. And as you start to look out front of you and you start to plot about where you're going to go, um, do you want to stay with YA? Do you want to, is that your forte? Do you see like branching off into other genres? I mean, maybe that's something you can't talk about either. But in terms of your own creative energy, what, what do you think? I think my heart it will always be with young literature. Mm -hmm. um, what I'm working on now really lends itself to middle grade. Like it's slightly, it skews even slightly younger, but I, I, w I don't even want to put it in that box really. Right. I feel like it's something, I don't know, you know, I can't really define it. But I feel like all of my favorite stories have always been younger, you know, The Secret Garden, The Secret Garden, A Little Princess. Alice in Wonderland, The Chronicles of Narnia, Anne of Green Gables, those are all, everything Roald Dahl has ever written. Those are all my favorite stories. And Harry Potter, obviously. Love Harry Potter, such a, a part of my childhood. And, and when I'm honest with myself, I realize that's where my heart is, and I think my heart will always be there. But How did you come to reading? When, like, when did it start to dawn on you that this is something that you were super passionate about? Not writing, reading. Oh, I don't even, I can't even, I couldn't even tell you. I've, I've been reading for as long as I can remember opening my eyes. I mean, the library was the place I went. I spent my summers just reading all day. I used to read like three, four books a day. They like kicked me out of the library. So what were your favorite series when you were younger and you're reading those multiple, or you know, the favorite books? Judy Bloom, Harry Potter. I mean, anything Judy Bloom had ever written. We didn't really have young adult when we were kids. Right. I remember reading, you know, The Prince and the Pauper like a thousand times. I loved that story. And, you know, Matilda, I was obsessed with James and the Giant Peach, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Um, you know, like all of these great classics that they, they became the foundation of my youth. Did you have other people that were like you when you were, I mean, like, or were you, did you find respite in books and that was like this place where you went and found your own self? Or did you have this gang of people that were really into reading? Because it seems to me, I ask this question because it seems to me, today's, uh, there seems to be these giant gangs of readers yeah. out there, especially in your genre, that love it. And that right. congregate together and that gather. And I was part of the Harry Potter phenomenon. I worked at orders and put on the parties and it's we amazing. saw the whole thing and went from one series to another. Right. Um, did you feel that you had that same thing when you were younger or were you just you sort of alone? Just me and my mom occasionally who, you know, shared some of her favorite stories with me, like Little Women and Anne of Green Gables and A Little Princess. All those books were introduced to me by my mother. Did you appreciate them um, yeah. at that age too? Yeah, I loved them. I used to just, I'd read the books and I'd watch the movies and I'd read the books and I'd watch the movies and it was kind of like where my friends were. Uh -huh. And uh, I think it's so incredible how young people have like these huge book clubs and these great fandoms and they're so passionate on the internet. I really think the internet has made it possible to find more like-minded people. Mm -hmm. You know, the earth is flat now. The internet has made it so, you know, someone in Poland can talk to someone in Los Angeles without even blinking. And it's, you know, you just find friends all over the world, so. Yeah, on the other hand too, it seems as if um, because of writers like yourself, Writers like Ransom, writers like Carrie, you know, J.K. Rowling. Right. Um, there seems to be a really strong thing happening in young literature, and that's really grabbing people and giving them a lot of different varieties to read. Um, whether or not they stay readers, I think 
more so right now, it seems, with women than men, but it does seem like there's a really strong thing. I'm really interested to see what happens with this next generation coming up right now. Yeah. Growing up with an exploding YA culture, how right. it all hangs with them. Yeah. It's going to be a challenge, I think. I think it'll be amazing. I mean, I think it goes to show that books aren't dead. Even with everything we've got now, all the technology and the internet, kids are still reading. Yeah, so. they absolutely are. Do you find that your readers are ebook readers, or are they print book? Do they have, you know, they is seem, there? They seem to be a good mix of everything. Yeah. I think the ebook is obviously like has changed the landscape of publishing and the way that teenagers engage with books. Yeah. Um, in a in a good way, in a positive way, they can take books wherever they go. They read them on their phones, even if this the screen is really small. Um, but I meet so many fans who are just they they love the book. They want the book, mm -hmm. and there's nothing quite like getting an actual book signed. You know, you can try and sign an e-reader or like electronically sign something, but it's not quite as satisfying, okay. so. No, there's certainly, I mean, something a lot, of, maybe the signature won't mean quite as much to people down the road, potentially, but I think there is certainly uh, something special about holding a book that the, you know the author's also held in their hand. Yeah. Something yeah. You know, sort of tactile about that. Um, you're in this in-between phase. Um, you uh, have, as we talked about, sort of the Shatter Me series is, is now in the rear view mirror to some degree. And you're talking, you're still doing the book festivals, you're still doing the book fairs. What do people want to talk to you about? Do they want to talk to you about the Shatter Me series? I mean, that seems like it's going to be around for some time. Like, even when this new stuff comes, it seems like you're going to have people who want to talk about those books. I've gotten thousands of messages from readers begging me to write a fourth Shatter Me book. Yeah. And I think that's mostly what they want to talk to me about. Yeah. They've, they're unsatisfied with the yeah. ending, they want more. Which is so, I mean again, a wonderful problem to have. I'm very grateful that they're enthusiastic, but it's just, I've sort of shifted gears, you know, so. I mean, mostly they're like, are you ever going to write anything else? And what are you working on next? Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a balance of both. I get to talk about both things. And your audience is one that's never shy about voicing their opinions. Yeah. To you, about your characters, about your books, about what you're going to write next. No, um, how do you find your own head space to do what you want to do and to make sure, you, you know, with the faith that you're going to make readers satisfied ultimately? Yeah, you know, that was something I had to learn. Um, I think the job of the author has changed so dramatically. I think even in the last five years, writers used to be, you know, it used to be a profession where you could just write the book and hide in your house and not talk to anyone right. and just be a, a bit of a hermit. And now the writer is expected to do interviews like this right. and talk to Thank people you. and be articulate and affable and know how to interact with young people who might be nervous or shy and um, and it's, it's sometimes complicated for an introvert. Many of my author friends are, you know, it's very difficult for them to talk to strangers and to engage with people who are even more nervous than they are. And so it's, it's interesting learning to be a writer in this brave new world, you know. Well, you're very good at it. You're affable and amiable and all those things. You're very You seem kind. so <laughs> comfortable in your skin. Thank you. And I think Appreciate that's going to that. mean good things for us, whatever you decide to write next. Thank you. You know we're going to be anxious to hear. Thank you so much. I really appreciate Thank that. Thank you. I really appreciate you joining us. Thank you for your time. You. It's yeah. a pleasure.